You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Pahrump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello and welcome to this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry and thanks for joining us on Ace Country Radio and we're also streaming at kpvm.tv. We're also on Roku. It is Tuesday, April 16th. In our top story, turning to national news, with tensions rising between Israel and Iran this past weekend, Iran is warning a larger, more precise attack against Israel could happen if Israeli forces counterattack. Samantha Roberts reports. According to sources, an Israeli response to Iran's retaliatory attack this past weekend may be imminent. The comments came as Israel contemplated their next steps. The two countries clashed at an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council, with Tehran stating it does not seek further escalation after launching the barrage of 300 drones and missiles, but warned there will be more decisive strikes if there is any Israeli counterattack. According to reports, the attack that took place over over the weekend was 99% successfully intercepted by Israeli and U.S. forces. President Joe Biden took a moment to address Iran's unprecedented aerial attack during a meeting with the Prime Minister of Iraq. Biden stated the U.S. and its allies were able to defeat the attack which occurred over the weekend. Turning back now to local news, a man is arrested in Henderson regarding a home invasion that results in two people being injured. R.J. Camacho reports. Henderson police were dispatched on April 13th following reports of a home invasion. While en route, officers received info that Philip Richardson, the suspect, had entered the residence and allegedly battered the person who was reporting the crime, as well as their spouse. Upon arrival, officers quickly located Richardson within the residence and placed him into custody. The two victims of the incident were transported to a local area hospital in order to receive treatment for injuries they sustained from the attack. According to Henderson police, this incident is an isolated one and is not in connection with other incidents. Richardson was booked into the Henderson Detention Center on the charges of burglary, home invasion, robbery with a deadly weapon, battery with a deadly weapon resulting in substantial bodily harm, battery with a deadly weapon resulting in substantial bodily harm with an elderly enhancement, and two counts of trespassing. Anyone with information regarding this case is urged to call the Henderson Police Department at 702-267-4911. And if you wish to remain anonymous, you can call Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555. And this week is the National Broadcasters Association's convention right here with a focus on artificial intelligence. News 25 is there at the event. The National Association of Broadcasters Convention or NAB, as the industry refers to it, is in town this week with their annual meetup at the Las Vegas Convention Center. The main theme this year is artificial intelligence. What, uh, what do you feel your role is today in this presentation? To support you in delivering a killer keynote by handling the data stuff so you can focus on connecting with the audience as only a human can. Okay, that's fair enough. Well, we do want to showcase today what a human and AI collaboration can look like. The NAB showcases the latest in broadcasting and streaming technology. Filmmaking gear is on display as well. A popular mode of transportation amongst the convention attendees is the Vegas Loop, a great way to get around the recently expanded convention center, and free to use. The plan is to eventually build out to more strip hotels and the airport. Currently, the only connected property is Resorts World. KBVM staff is here and toured to learn about the latest trends in radio and audio production. The NAB is a great networking event with workshops, talks, and meetings for those in the industry and has traditionally been held here in Las Vegas. NAB runs this year from April 13th to the 17th. 
and in KPVM's coverage of all of Nye County, Clark County, and beyond, our Las Vegas correspondent, Maria Centers, is now bringing us the latest in foster care triumphs. Clark County Department of Family Services, along with UNLV Fostering Scholars and a variety of other community partners, hosted a celebration and resource fair to honor our high school graduates here in Clark County in the foster care system. Let's hear from some of these monumental and top success stories. I'm so happy I graduated and I could branch out to new more things like working more, more me time, family time, friends. My goals for my future is to either become a nurse or go into business and marketing. I'm planning to go to college at CSN for one semester and then my second semester at UNLV to get a feeling of a community college and then a university. Neglect serves as the number one reason why children come to the attention of the agency. Whether you're a foster care individual or not, um, transitioning from high school to college is very hard. Transitioning out of high school into college was fairly rough because I didn't have the resources. My second year when I transferred to UNLV, I connected with Ms. Heather Richardson at Fostering Scholars and she connected me to so many vital resources. We have uh, financial assistance for uh, fees, uh, books, uh, transportation, uh, housing. Uh, we also help with academic success. We also have coaches and mentors to provide assistance for uh, mental support. Clark County's foster care program is designed to provide a safe, stable, and nurturing environment for children who had to be removed from their home due to safety or well-being risks. Reach out. Um, I know that many people feel that it's embarrassing to reach out for help and support. That's not the case at all. There's so many people out there that's willing to help you and provide you with the support that you need to be successful in life, and that's what's important. My advice for other high schoolers in foster care is to never give up and just always talk to your case manager, your foster parents, whoever you have about anything. If you need something, go to your foster parents and caseworker. They are there to provide for you. They are there to be your family. They are there to support you with you becoming an adult. There is still a need for more foster care parents here in Clark County. Reporting from UNLV right here in Las Vegas, I'm Maria Centers with Southern Nevada News Network. And of course, I'm biased, but I love seeing CSN also being focused on there in its support of foster kids and students. Well, just be sure to note that when it comes to foster children, there are more than 3,400 in the foster care system here in Clark County, from toddlers to teenagers who all need your help. All backgrounds and ethnicities are encouraged to become involved. And the city of Las Vegas says move over regular pets because they're introducing us to two new public safety dogs, one named Wilbur and the other named Scarlet. On Monday, city officials introduced the community to Wilbur, an 18-month-old who will be part of the Las Vegas Fire and Rescue's bomb squad, and two-year-old Scarlet, who will assist the city's Department of Public Safety. Both Labrador Retrievers are specially trained in security checks, special events, investigations, and more to help enhance public safety. According to the city, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue has operated the only public safety agency bomb squad in Southern Nevada for more than 40 years. Each member of the team is sworn special deputy U.S. Marshal and member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. As for Scarlett, she'll be spending her time in our tourist corridors, as well as on Fremont Street Experience, working out of the new substation. Both of these beautiful pet officers with their handlers recently completed an intensive six-week 240-hour training course during which they bonded and practiced techniques to use in duty in, in the field. Wilbur is trained to detect odors that are related to explosives and will be working with Lieutenant Ernie Mendoza on the bomb squad, while Scarlett is trained in detecting odors related to firearms and explosives and will be working with Sergeant Jeff Belcher. So I'm so jealous and I know you all are too. 
Well, the Welcome to Las Vegas sign changes colors once again. We'll tell you which color and which worthy cause when News 25 returns. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, the Welcome to Las Vegas sign is changing to purple tomorrow in honor of Military Children Month. The Welcome to Las Vegas sign will be changing colors on April 17th to purple in recognition of both Military Kids Day and Month of the Military Child. In addition to the lights changing colors, a brief ceremony will be held with Clark County Commissioner William McCurdy II and the local military children and their parents. Commissioner McCurdy went on to state that, The military has had a profound influence on our community, primarily through Nellis and Creech Air Force bases. The lives of an estimated 11,000 school-aged children with a connection to the military also have seen their lives shaped by the influence of the military. They face unique challenges and must be resilient as their families often move, and they sometimes see a parent deployed away from home for long periods of time. John Ebert, who is the Nevada Superintendent of Public Instruction, spoke on the matter as well, saying that the month of the military child is a time that recognizes the sacrifices military-connected children make, as well as applauding them for their courage and resilience. Month of the Military Child activities are established to recognize the courage and resilience of Nevada's military-connected youth and children. The average military student faces challenges with transitioning from place to place place more than twice during high school. Most military children also end up attending six to nine different school systems throughout their lives from kindergarten to 12th grade. All Nevadans are encouraged to wear purple, which is the color that symbolizes all branches of the military as an icon of support and appreciation for military children. And the American Red Cross of Southern Nevada is recognizing scientists technicians, and physicians during the 49th Annual Medical Laboratory Professionals Week. This dedicated team of healthcare workers meticulously collects and tests donated blood, ensuring the well-being of the community and patients in need of life-saving blood transfusions or treatments. In Nevada and across the nation, Red Cross laboratory professionals maintain stringent standards vital for recipients of donated blood. The Red Cross employs over 2,200 laboratory and manufacturing experts at 146 labs and distribution facilities nationwide to facilitate the crucial process. Medical Laboratory Professionals Week was established in 1975 to enhance understanding and appreciation of the scientists, technicians, and lab assistants who contribute significantly to every aspect of healthcare. Celebrate Medical Laboratory Professionals Week by donating blood. The Red Cross of Southern Nevada encourages residents to schedule a blood donation appointment this week to support a consistent blood supply. Appointments can be conveniently booked through the Red Cross Blood Donor app by visiting redcrossblood.org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. Well, the Pahrump Valley High School track team is running all over looking for volunteers. They need your help at a track meet this Thursday, April 19th. The Pahrump Valley High School track team is in need of volunteers to help with their home meet this Thursday, April 18th. They are in need of the following events, long jump, high jump, shot put, and pole vault. There will be officials there and coaches there to handle the specifics of the event. They are in need of those that can help log measurements, retrieve implements, and do measurements, along with cheering on the athletes. If you want to volunteer, contact Coach Nagel at dnagle at nyschools.org. The meet time is 4.30 p.m. on Thursday. It's also senior night, so come on out and give these senior athletes one last great home event. And speaking of track, now here's Mikey Ruhan with your look at some other spring sports. Hey, hey, hey. 
Time now for your News 25 look at sports and streaming at www.kpvm.tv and now on Roku. Golden Knights have two games left in the regular season. One of them is tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks. The Golden Knights officially clinched their spot into this year's postseason last week. And now fans can score tickets. Tickets went on sale this morning. The opponents, dates, and times of the series will be determined upon the conclusion of the NHL regular season. The Golden Knights have partnered with Graffiti Park to unveil a new mural at Casa Don Juan in the Arts District. This was unveiled celebrating their 2023 championship win. Las Vegas Aces were pretty busy in the WNBA draft last night. In round two, they picked Daisha Fair from Syracuse. Another round two pick, Kate Martin from Iowa. Another round two pick, Elizabeth Kitley from Virginia Tech. And in round three, Angela Jackson from Jackson State. The legendary radio voice of the New York Yankees, John Sterling, is retiring effective immediately after more than three decades in the booth, he and his team said on Monday. Let's hear some home run calls. That is gone to the back row of the monster seats. It's Glaber Day. Alex Rodriguez has made Major League Baseball history the youngest player ever to hit 500 home runs. An A-bomb from A-Rod. His 500th home run. John, I wish you a happy retirement, and you're fine, like Sterling, Sterling Silver. And that's your look at sports on News 25. And congratulations again to all of the female basketball players out there, and especially to the WNBA's latest draft picks. News 25 will be right back. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. Well, when it comes to electricity, line workers brave heights, harsh weather, and live wires to keep our power on. But how has their gear kept them safe throughout it all? Valley Electric Association is diving into the innovative world of line worker equipment. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. Line workers serve on the front lines of our nation's energy needs to ensure we have safe, reliable power. Throughout the years, the challenges of the job haven't changed much, but safety gear sure has. Let's take a look at the evolution of line workers' equipment. From 1875 to 1900, electrification begins and line workers are wearing early headgear in felt or leather that looks similar to a newsboy's hat. The digging spoon used then was an extra long handled shovel or spoon used for digging power pole holes. Workers had handmade belts, bare hands, and used climbing spikes to climb wooden power poles. From 1901 to 1925, safety begins with homemade hot sticks used to work with high voltage. The industry begins standardizing equipment like rubber gloves and leather tool bags. Safety measures are put in place. From 1926 to 1950, safety training improves and linemen wear better hats, use insulated shotgun sticks, and utilize truck-mounted hydraulic equipment. From 1951 to 1975, line workers reach new heights with the availability of bucket trucks and faster communication with two-way radios. Rubber glove protectors add increased safety. From 1971 to 1990, a new law of the land emerges allowing females to become line workers. Invention of hard hats, rubber sleeve improvements, and telescoping or extendo sticks are now used on high voltage lines. From 1990 to present day, we now have insulated hard hats, harnesses to keep our line workers safe from falling, specialized clothing that is now fire and flame resistant, battery operated crimpers, computer tablets, and so much more. Line worker gear and safety has changed throughout the years to keep our line workers safe. So the next time you see a line worker, thank them for keeping the lights on.
News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Let's take a look outside through our Lerner and Rowe Weather Cam at this beautiful post-tax day weather. No more windy weather, not a cloud in that direction. A closer look at the temps after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Good evening, Nevada. I am Rosal here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv and now Roku. Taking a look at Nevada right now, up in northern Nevada, Fernley, Fallon, and Carson City are all at 72 degrees. Tonopah is at 68 degrees, Goldfield at 70, Beatty at 79, Amargosa at 80 degrees, Las Vegas at 79 degrees, and Death Valley is at 98 degrees. Here in the Paradise of Prump, it is currently 79 degrees. The high today was 81 degrees. Wind blowing west at 7 miles per hour. Humidity 14% today, sunny, and the sun rose this morning at 6.08 a.m. and set at 7.19 p.m. Humidity did go, is going to go up to 29% tonight. The wind will still be blowing east-southeast at 5 miles per hour. The low tonight is going to be 53 degrees. With clear skies, let's take a look at the rest of the week. It looks like throughout this entire rest of the week, we are going to be staying in the mid to high 80s. And then we reach the 90s on Sunday into next week when we're staying in the low 90s and high 80s. It also looks like it's going to be partly cloudy for the rest of this week. But next week, it's going to be sunny and looks like we are going to be skipping spring this year. There was a few cold fronts, but now we're just going straight to summer, hitting those 90 degree weather. Back to the desk. Here's you, Nat. Always great seeing you. And speaking of smart and talented youth, we'd love to say a happy birthday to AJ Roberts. He is the smart, talented son of his equally intelligent and talented on air KPVM talent family members, Samantha Roberts and Anthony Roberts. So happy birthday, AJ. Love seeing that pic of you and your dog. All right, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry, and from all of us here at KPVM and A's Country Radio, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the air next newscast. Good night. <laughs>